Let's get over to our man, Mr. Dave Mazda, as you do each and every other Monday. And folks, Dave is the Managing Director, Head of Product at Direction Shares. Uh, you can come over to our website at TFNN. You'll see the direction banner. Hit that direction banner. And as you hit that banner, you're going to see that we got a, a new infrastructure bull, D-O-Z-R. Dave Mazda, how are you doing today? Doing well. Happy to be back. That's a beautiful thing. We appreciate you coming back. You know, and as I was hitting the banner this morning out here, I'm seeing, uh, talk to me about, this is pretty cool, man. I know this bill didn't go through on Friday, but this bill's going to go through, man. That's the bottom line. This this actually gives people, this is pretty cool, man. I mean, you're all over this. So talk, talk to me about this new uh, ETF that you have here. No, no. Uh, appreciate you picking up on and appreciate the idea here is that uh, there's a real opportunity from an infrastructure standpoint. I think uh, it was clear that for long-term investors, uh, that's something that people want to might step into, particularly, you know, just think of the fact that we know driving around, no matter where you live in the U.S., our infrastructure needs some work, right? Seriously. In fact, you yeah. know, we have a, a pretty low grade uh, from uh, from a scoring perspective. But there's also a trading opportunity because, as you know, um, this bill is likely going to go through, but it didn't. Um, so these stocks got hit. And when it does go through, it's still unclear because we know how Congress works of exactly where this money gets spent. So traders might see that it can, can use this fund, DOZR, as an opportunity to get exposed to U.S.-centric infrastructure companies. And that's important here, particularly from a trading perspective, because a lot of people see infrastructure. You think of just these massive utility companies. They're more global, very European-focused. These are kind of your picks and shovels, U.S.-based companies that are going to benefit from a U.S. specific bill that's likely going to go through Congress, whenever that might be. Totally. You know what is really cool about this, Dave and folks, okay, is that, you know, I would say that in a longer term aspect, I mean, this is not only going to go through, this could start off slow, but these companies are going to have some good cash flows for, for five to seven years, which, which is really cool, man. You don't get a lot of shots. And it does, I'm not saying, folks, things are going to go to the moon. What I'm trying to explain is that when you do have a policy shift and there's that much money that's coming in, well, everyone loves those green checks, Dave. And these companies will like them, too. I mean, you know, so it's going to be pretty interesting watching this, this, this shake out. No, you're absolutely right. And look, at the end of the day, um, you know, we know the situation in Washington. In fact, you know, every side of the aisle points fingers at one another. Um, but that's it's kind of how the sausage is made. It's uncomfortable uh, to, to, to feel it and experience it. But the one thing that uh, both parties are agreeing on is at the end of the day, infrastructure, whatever size it might be, it makes some sense. All the other things to be determined. Um, and then at the, on the other hand, state and local governments are going to be incentivized to be committing some more capital along with the federal stimulus. So to your point, the companies in this particular portfolio are going to see an opportunity um, from those recurring revenue streams. But the path to get there is going to be far from certain. So just like we've seen from an overall market perspective with some choppiness in October, a lot of these infrastructure names are probably going to be in an environment of really kind of some whipsawing, especially until we know with greater specificity what's actually going to be in this package and where the check's going to go. There's no doubt. And at the beginning of the markets, folks, that's just kind of how it goes. Now, it, which is really cool, I mean, we have a, a tradable market both sides, whether you want to be either a bull or a bear, folks, okay? And this is where these direction ETFs really come in because whether we, we can talk the banking sector, we can get into the oil sector. You know, we're talking some big moves in some of your ETFs here, Dave, which is really cool, man, because we haven't had a two-way market in a long period of time. You know, like I'm sure right now there's a lot of folks that think we're going to take another leg down. There's a lot of folks that think we just hit a bounce and we'll go up. So in both cases, uh, we got some really good action out here. Yeah, exactly. Look, September was an uncomfortable month. I think people were hoping October uh, would see that 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 bounce. Not, not seeing it today, uh, clearly. Uh, what's what's interesting is, though, for traders, this is uh, really where the opportunities emerge is that you have this two way market. Right. And we have this real push pull, especially, you know, depending upon how you want to cut it long duration versus short duration and fixed income, you know, uh, value versus growth uh, in, in the equity market sector wise. Look at the spread just today between energy and tech. Right. Um, and that's something we haven't seen in a while. So I, I really think traders see a, can see a real opportunity where we're seeing real activity. Probably not a surprise. A lot of a lot of activity happening in our energy funds, oil and gas, gush and gush and drip, but yes. also still ha still happening in tech L, tech S, SOX L, SOX S. So 
traders haven't given up on this eventual this eventual semiconductor rebound. I think the next couple the next two weeks are gonna be a pretty messy market until we get into earnings season. And that's actually when we're gonna start hearing from companies again what's really happening from the supply chain perspective. And that's really where some of these winners and losers are going to continue to emerge. So I'd say traders kind of, you know, uh, stay close to your screens, stay, cl stay close to the keybirds, uh, because there's some technical things that are happening, which are unique. And then there's this kind of macro backdrop that's making the trading environment much more two way than it had been for the better part of 2021. I know, which is so cool. I mean, it's just it's and, and what, what has happened, of course, is that now we, we have the inflation deal that's out there, inflation, non-inflation. I mean, we get some great movement, man. There's no doubt. Well, listen, Dave, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. You have a great week, safe week, and we look forward to having you on two weeks from today. Thank you for having me. Look forward to chatting again soon. Absolutely. Have a great one. Have a safe one.